If you don't understand government, you can't be mighty. The last time you heard God clearly was the last time you obeyed him. Those things you are hearing is not God. If you like, use your life to experiment it. Ten years. You can't be in error for ten years and not know. Try. Because this day we have made God a talkative. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. Meanwhile, God doesn't talk much. He only answers much. Yes, he answers much. So make, make your life a life, an altar of prayer. You will hear him because he's into answering. Not to, he's not a talkative. It is a comical situation to see somebody that doesn't know government talking about might. Spiritual material need an infrastructure to stand. Your life will suffer from the anointing you carry. Your life, you will suffer because you are carrying an anointing. Are you not aware of that? It's easy to say, oh, we want oil, we want oil. People that know what it means, they say that sparingly. They are more concerned about the disciplines, to perfect the disciplines and to comply with the judgments. And once you perfect the disciplines, you comply with the judgment, the anointing will begin to move you from between Eshtal and Zora. The second factor. Huh? Oh. Since my time has finished. Or is it the television that died? The television died, not my time. <laughs> May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. I have stopped the excitement game. Because I've seen perils that I went through because of the anointing. Perils. And I don't think it's something someone should be excited about. Terrible perils. Jesus Christ. Went to preach in Guadalajara. The demons I was casting out were going to my house in Makodi to torment my wife. She was pregnant and she had a miscarriage. I was on the field. When they were wheeling her into the theater for evacuation, she called me and said, don't come home. Finish that work. Finish that work. I said, you have strengthened me. You have strengthened me. And when I came to the crusade ground that night, it was with fury. I located everyone that had devils. <laughs> when I, my wife was the one that permitted me to finish the night. When I came back, she was depressed because she lost a child. I had to become... I had to transform from being a preacher. It's just that I didn't know how to play guitar. I would have just started singing for her. I have gone through perils because of the anointing. It's not an object of excitement. It's not even something you should desire if you are not ready to go all the way. It will consume you. You'll be consumed. You can't think of anything again. Your affections are set on things above. It, it, it's not you. It's the anointing that is making you like that. And you don't know government? You don't know that when you are tired and about to sleep, then the Holy Spirit will blow a whistle. And he will blow it only twice. He will blow it enough to ensure that it appeared faintly in your spirit. Not loud, though. Faint. Then you will wait to see what you will do. And if you go to sleep that day, that your sleep was seen. For the Bible says, he that knoweth what to do, and doeth it not. That day, sleep was seen in your life. Oh. Oh. When he wants you to fast, he will not say fast. So he will just do, and he will do it twice. That's my own experience. That will be the beginning of a 60-day fast. And you have not yet, and you don't know obedience yet. And you are saying, 
There are places you go through. Spiritual warfare stops being a topic in Bible study. It becomes an experience. Do you understand? Maybe you contributed in the Bible study very well. You were vocal when they were talking about spiritual warfare. The experience doesn't look like the study. <laughs> we are in mighty men conference. It's not for hallelujah, amen, hey! It's for sober reflection and meditation so that you can make the make choices. It's those choices you will make that will alter your life, not the sit down and, and meditate. Think well. It's better to be sober in the house of sorrow than in a place of merriment. Because when you are sober with gravity, you can make a decision that will change your destiny. Are you with me? Number three. Okay. The screen has come back. Number three. Before I sit down, I will stop at number three. Number three is process. You know, in the faith age, it's about naming and claiming. But the reason why Adam could not outsmart Satan in the Garden of Eden was because Adam was created an adult. He was never given the opportunity to go through process. So he was a small man in a big body. Maybe he was three months old when Satan showed up. But he, he had biceps like this. This mighty man thing we are talking about is not the size of your chest. Because you can be a small man hidden where? In, in a big body. And that's how most Christians are today. Your calling was designed and crafted to, to domicile you on a pathway that is heavily laden with challenges. And it is only that grace on your life that will see you through it. Do you understand? Uh, and then the goal of that challenge reading pathway that you are compelled to pass through is that as you are going through it, you become, you'll be becoming more Christ-like. You will die to anger. You will die to lust. Huh? That's like a surgical word. Your pathway, the path God has deposited you for destiny. It's, it's heavily laden with the surgeries that will transform you. You think it's something you, you shout about? No. 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 Have you ever seen a woman? She can rejoice when she conceives. They give her positive from the lab. So she runs home and says, <laughs> See you. <laughs> it's positive. Hallelujah. 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 By seven months, when the stomach is like this, huh? she will be looking for a pillow. She will not know that it's not a pillow she's looking for, but she will think it's a pillow. Put one here. Put here. Then she will speak in tongue. Put another, it won't, it won't go. That's how process is. It locks you with pressure. So much pressure that is only change, transformation, that can be the result. You can't talk about being mighty without having the scars of your process. That's why we have, that's why we have a, Ministers that are laughable. Somebody wanted to start a church in Abuja and then put something on online that if you want to be a worker in that church, oh, apply. And he was boasting that there were 1,000 something people that applied. That, that's a minister. His orientation for ministry is crowd hunt. He has no intention for discipleship because he doesn't want to spend his life on a man. He also wears a collar. That's why he came. To hunt the crowd. That's a man that doesn't understand process. Tell me, who can that man's life cover? Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, let me end. Are you there? Acts chapter 6. 
are you a small man in a big body? And every time there's a particular temptation you have been falling for 12 years. So the devil has registered it in his archive that this is the button that brings him down. So he, Satan himself will now sponsor your, your ministry for 15 years and put you on television, put you on radio. You will be doing talk shows with presidents. He knows the button. You know? He is the one that helped you. And you became, even till the point that you now have a baritone as you are going, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Then he will call when you are very visible. And he will touch that button. Because he knows that since you are not a product of process, he will also harvest something from your life. There is a harvest he is anticipating. Because your life was grown without process. Have you seen that mango? Mango tree. That is still small like this, but it, it, it has four mangoes. You have not seen it. It grew out of anxiety. Such a mango, when you see that mango tree, you can pluck mango and go. But it, it cannot cover. Because it grew out of what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Process. Have you been there? When God sent me to Benue State, I went to the ministry of the last man that broke through in that place. Because they don't break through in Benue State. Research and find out how many ministers from Benue State are visible. Don't start from now. Start from 1972. And take inventory. If there are more than five, Come back and tell me that my research is wrong. I challenge you, go. From 1972 till date, find out how many people ministering in Benue State broke through from there. So I went to the ministry of the man that broke through. And unfortunately, he's late. I said, how long did it take? He said, seven years. Seven years? I have seven years. Started laboring. It was in the seventh year that my greatest problem in ministry came. <coughs> I was expecting, may the Lord, may the Lord help you to know that there is a process. And be quiet. Be quiet. Don't make noise until you understand the rudiments of that pathway. Expecting something massive. The, it, that was the year where the greatest problem so far was was released. So it was not seven years. So now I was now laboring, not knowing when God will. You understand? You, you don't understand. Eventually, it, 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 I found out it was fourteen years. It was seven times two. And there was no way I could know that except I've gone through what? There are many things you can celebrate as breakthrough now. Because of those 14 years, when I see it, <laughs> you don't know its problems. <laughs> Aye. There is a wisdom you can never get if you have not gone through process. You will embrace a serpent and call it favor is only someone that has experience and mastery that will know the name of that thing you are celebrating. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a memory of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not good that we should leave the word of God and serve them. We understand our assignment. Just like an Ezemo is dedicated to an altar, we, are, we give ourselves to the ministry of the word of God and prayer. That is our preoccupation. This situation was about to change their preoccupation, their operations. 
Are you with me? And all of this happened when the number of, of what? Of the disciples multiplied. They knew, and just in case you, you are not aware, in Acts chapter 1, they had, Jesus had a kingdom seminar with his disciples. Are you here? All right. So, one of the results of the kingdom seminar was the, their job description, which was the ministry of the word of God and prayer. They knew that from Jesus. A situation came up that wanted to undermine their operations. That wanted to move them from ministration to administration. Hmm? Meanwhile, the only way they could be in the process was to remain in the discipline, in the practice. So this was an attempt to take them outside of the confinement of their operations. It is that their operations that has the power to make them mighty. Because subsequently you will find a man like Peter, whose shadow could heal the sick. It was because of the oppression. So the people understood the process and they fought to maintain it. If you don't know the process, you will leave it and begin to count checks. The test of prosperity is more difficult to pass than the test of poverty. Many of us pass the test of poverty, but the test of prosperity is more difficult to pass. It is when the era of prosperity comes, you will begin to notice waste. Before you were. But even if you don't pray, money will come. And if you pray a little, you can move in power. Do miracles for two hours. You can come out. You can even come out without prayer and you move. It becomes very easy for you to sleep away. If you don't understand what the process was designed to make out of you. I want to stop there. I have one more minute. How I wish I had ten. Uh, can we pray? I know your heart is broken. so it's, you are. Can you pray under this condition?